One of the great things about Photoshop is the way that you can mask certain areas of the picture and just work on the bits that you want to. We saw that last time in the Quick Mask episode. This time, as an extension to that, we're going to have a look at how to use layers and the clipping mask to do similar things. OK, I've got two pictures open here. My snowboard jumper, who unfortunately is only actually about three or four feet off the ground and a nice little background to drop him into. So the first thing I have to do is drop one picture into the other. At the moment they are in separate windows. So getting the uh, pointy cursor, I can just pull him across and stick him in this picture. Okay, now we don't need that one anymore, so I'll just drop that one down the bottom. Now he's more or less where I want him. You can see these um, uh, little guides here. This is going to be a DVD cover. So I want him on the front cover, which is this panel here. And uh, the back cover will have various other little bits of wording on. So uh, if I need to check whether I've got him in the right place, I can go over here. This is the layers palette you can see on the right here. And that is the layer with the jumper on it and the background layer. Over here we have a an opacity slider. It will be a slider when I open that. And we can knock him down to 50%. So now I can see the background and the ski jumper. And I can position him just the way I want him. And he's more or less in position now. I can also taking that back up to 100%. I can also make him bigger or smaller. I've got to be a little bit careful here because I can actually squish him up one way or the other. Now what should happen is as if I press the shift button at the same time, then that will stop that happening. But it doesn't seem to want to do that today. But anyway, he's the right size. So what I have to do now, the, in Photoshop, we have layer masks. And I would just come down here, press the button down here for a layer mask, and the layer mask would appear. Unfortunately, in Photoshop Elements, which is what we're working in today, they don't have layer masks as such. But there is a way of doing exactly the same thing using what they call a clipping mask. So first of all, we have to open a new layer down here and we want a solid color layer. Any color will do, doesn't really matter. So I'm going to stick with black, which I've selected here. And now the whole picture goes black because the top layer is a solid layer of black. Right, now the first thing I need to do is to push my ski jumper up so that he's the top layer and the black is underneath it so now we can't see the background anymore but we'll reveal that in a moment so coming over here the next thing i have to do is go to the layer menu and where it says create clipping mask just press that button here now we get a little arrow here these two layers are now tied together now what what will happen now is that as I paint with the brush, I will either be revealing the layer underneath or, or restoring it. So if I paint, you notice the palette here is black and white, black on top, white underneath. If I paint with black, the brush always paints with the uh, top color, it will, no it won't, not yet. Uh, first of all, I have to click through, make sure I'm painting on the mask here in the palette. Now, as I paint with black, it will reveal the layer underneath, which is the background layer here. OK, so the first thing I need to do is strip away all of it. So I'm going to increase my brush size up in the top left corner here to 2000 pixels or so and just whack off the main parts of this layer that I don't need anymore. I think that's about all I can do with that. So I've got to now make the brush a little bit smaller. So about five, six hundred, seven hundred will do. And just get in there, just rough it out. 
so that now if I accidentally go over like now I've chopped his hand off all I have to do is change the color to white and it will restore whatever I've painted out so white brings it back black takes it out okay so we just knock that off and the way to do this is to keep making the brush a little bit smaller what I did then I right clicked which gives me a range of brushes now when you first uh, go into the brush palette in Photoshop I'll just show you this uh, you get the default brushes which gives you a selection of all sorts of shapes and sizes but it only gives you a few different sizes in the sort of normal brushes what I would call the normal the, the straight round brush uh, so by going into uh, basic brushes you then get all the different sizes in two different types of brush you've got the hard edge brush which is what we're using now and the soft edge brush soft edge brush will give you a oh, let's find a decent size one the soft edge brush will give you a soft edge obviously now for these purposes I'm going to use the hard edge brushes because we want eventually a pretty much hard edge all the way around so the thing to do is to keep making your brush smaller and smaller getting closer and closer and stripping away everything now it's very important to make sure that you don't miss any bits that's why I like to use a nice big brush I go back up to my palette I can change it to about a hundred which will give me a bigger brush so we're just going to get as close as we can to the outline without being silly right so easy enough paint 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 um, and now I need to start zooming in so I've got a short keyboard shortcut here if you hold down control and the spacebar you can then click and zoom in if you press alt as well while holding control in the spacebar you get a minus you can see the cursor's changed to minus so plus minus minus obviously will zoom out and plus will zoom in okay so uh, we just get closer and closer and closer and as I get really close to the edge it's nice to use a, as big a brush as possible but eventually you, you come to stuff like there where you can't actually get into the gap so then you need to uh, make a smaller brush and try and match it to the size that you want the um, gap that you want to get into now if I want to get right into that corner there you can see as a right angle then I've got to make my brush really small say about five pixels and get right in the corner the other way to do that if I can just sort of go back is if I was using a 10 or 12 pixel brush I couldn't quite get in the corner but what I could do is that and then change my color to white and just put back the corners so either way you know choose the way that suits you best now when you're painting it's important to get rid of all of the outline because as you zoom back you will see all that see that bit there that will become quite a distinct line distinct outline which you don't really want so I'm going to go right in and get rid of all the gray so it's good to zoom in as far as you can and get right right in there okay so this obviously is a fairly time-consuming job another little uh, keyboard shortcut which is quite useful if you press the space bar on its own you get this hand cursor and then you can slide around the picture I'm going to show you lots of little uh, lots of keyboard shortcuts because it's quite a time-consuming job and anything that makes it shorter 
will help. The other thing, the other keyboard shortcut, which is worth noting, is when you want to change the color from black to white or white to black, you can just press the key X and it will change. So if I press key X, then it will change to white in the palette and I can paint back again. So press X again, changes to black. So it will just keep swapping the foreground and background color. Now another little shortcut which is very very useful indeed. You can see here we've got a, a, a straight line more or less down to about here and instead of trying to paint that freehand I can put in my brush. I've just made a, a brush stroke there. Uh, take my brush right down to the bottom of the line. Press shift and it will paint me a nice straight line. Now I've still got a little bit of outline left. So without pressing the tool anymore, I go back up the top, press shift first, click the mouse and it will keep giving me a line backwards and forwards for as long as I do that. So that's very, very useful for getting straight lines. A lot of, lot of the cutting that you have to do is straight lines. I can even do it on here. So if I click there, uh, I get a nice straight line there. It's a good way of getting rid of the background in a hurry, these, these little bits. But make sure that you get every single bit. It's quite difficult to see some of these little dirty bits sometimes against the background. What you can do, you can see there's a little bit there, or I can see it anyway. Okay, and we've got this here. Uh, what you can do, of course, is to switch off the background, and then you get this checkered uh, board here, which is quite good for seeing those tiny little bits that you missed. Okay, so you've got to go all the way around very, very carefully using all the help you can get with the shortcuts that I've been giving you. And when you've finished, zoom out. Uh, that's control zero takes you to fit in, fit in window, basically. And as we go round, as you can see, the background is disappearing. And we're left with just the skier. Okay, so all you need to do is carefully whiz round the rest of the uh, figure. And there you have it. You may need sometimes to adjust the color or the density or whatever just to blend him in nice with the background. But in this case, he fits quite well. And just to show you the finished work, if I can find it, here we go. Um, click on that, get rid of that marquee. And here's the DVD cover as, as it was presented. So a few words to thicken him out. And I'm sure you'll agree that a good use of masking. So there you have it. You don't have to be a great artist. Uh, you need a bit of a steady hand with the mouse, but that soon comes. You could use a Wacom tablet with a stylus. I've tried that as well, and I find the mouse just as easy to use. Next time I'll show you a few more keyboard shortcuts and how to refine the edge to blend it into the background a little bit better. See you next time. My name's Jeff Lawrence.